create the UI for our plugin, we have to use Java Swing components. IntelliJ IDEA includes a Swing UI designer that can help, but the recommended way since a few versions ago is using the new Kotlin UI DSL. In theory, you cannot use the GUI designer with Kotlin, but you could potentially use it and then convert the code to Kotlin. The problem is that once you do that, you won't be able to use the designer for any future changes. In this lesson, we're going to have a look at both options. We will begin using the designer, and later on, we will refactor the UI using the new DSL. We begin by creating a new GUI form using the Swing UI designer, which will create two new files. A form file containing the UI, and a Java class that we will convert to Kotlin and use as our view. By default, a new form is created containing a J panel. We will start by changing the field name of the panel so we can easily identify it. Then, we will show the expert properties so we can give the panel a name, which will be really useful once we get to testing. Finally, so the panel doesn't look too small or too big, we will give it a minimum and prefer size. From here on, we're going to keep adding swing components to our UI. We add a new label that we will call name label, and as before, set the field name and name. Next to it, we add a combo box that will contain all the cards in our to-do list. Below the name label, we add a description label and align it vertically to the top. And next to the description label, we will put a JTEX pane to show the description of each card selected. We also want to make it non-editable since it will only be showing information. And that's the UI done. Let's go back to the Trello form Java class. This class contains all the elements that we have just created for our UI. But first things first, let's convert this class to Kotlin. The first change that we're going to make is swapping the vals for vars, because we don't want our components to always be null. We will now extend from dialog wrapper, which will require us to pass a project. IntelliJ provides us with this dialog wrapper, which we're supposed to use for all the model dialogs to keep the UI consistent throughout the IDE. This abstract class also gives us some features for free, like the OK and Cancel buttons. We also have to implement the Trello form view interface that we created and pass a project and a Trello injector instances to the constructor. We can now implement all the methods from the dialog wrapper and the Trello form view interface. But for now, we're only going to implement create center panel, which is the only method that we are forced to implement from dialog wrapper. This method has to return the main panel from our UI, which in our case is the Trello panel. The last step here is to initialize the dialog wrapper so all the UI components are instantiated. For that, we have to call the dialog wrapper method init within the init block. We can finally use the Trello form in the Trello action to actually show the dialog. We start by creating a new instance of the Trello form, pass the project from an action event, and also pass a new instance of our Trello injector implementation. The only thing that's left to do is go back to our plugin XML file and register our new action. I'm going to reuse one of the actions that we created in a previous lesson. So rather than using hello world action here, I will use Trello action. And finally, I will remove the second group since we don't really need it anymore. If we run the plugin and go to the my new plugin group in the toolbar, we can find there our Trello action. And once we click on it, it will show the dialog that we have just created. Let's now have a look at the Kotlin UI DSL. We're back into our Trello form, so let's rebuild the UI using the DSL. We still need to return a panel in Create Center Panel, so we begin here by creating a new panel. We can now add a new row which we can pass a label text to. And within the row, we invoke our name combo. It is very important to actually invoke it as if it was a function, otherwise the component won't be part of the panel. We do the same for the second row and add the description text pane. And since we don't really need the labels or the panel that we created before, we can go ahead and remove them. The next step is to initialize the combo box and the J text pane. As I mentioned before, it is important to set a name for each component so we can get a reference to them later on when we are testing them. Also, like we did before, we don't want this text pane to be editable, so we can take care of that now. For the J combo box, the new DSL deprecates J combo box. So instead, we will use combo box and also set its name. Now that we have defined the UI with the new DSL, we can delete the old form file and also change the minimum and prefer size of the panel as we did before. 
If we run our plugin and launch our action, we can see the new dialog is similar. The only difference being the combo box doesn't really stretch across the dialog, so let's fix that. When we invoke a UI component, we can also pass a set of flags and grow policies. In this case, we want the combo box to grow, so it will take the full width of the dialog. We run the plugin again, and now the UI looks exactly how we want it. You can visit this URL to get more information about the new Kotlin UI DSL. And keep in mind, it is in active development, so breaking changes can still occur.